Hey my friend, what's up? Did you know that there is a few anti-aging substances that are must-haves if you want to slow down and even reverse your aging? Check out this discussion on this almost magical compound that gives you more energy and is really great for your anti-aging efforts as well. If you're enjoying these videos, please make sure to click the button below to subscribe so you can get notified when we release new videos. Our goal is to help you look and feel younger and live your most confident and adventurous life. And finally, before we begin, if you're interested in hair wellness, if you're interested in getting thicker, stronger, and longer hair, make sure to check out fullyvital.com. The team has come up with a unique set of 100% natural products to give your hair wellness a boost. All right, let's get on with the show. Hello, everybody. Welcome back. Today, I have a special guest. His name is Tom Ingoglia. And in terms of bio, Tom's life changed when he was infected with Lyme disease because he experienced adverse drug reactions that spiraled into drug addiction. But his rock bottom was losing half his family in the same week. Tom dedicated himself to healing over eight years, found intravenous NAD therapy, and miraculously regained his health. He went on to spearhead IV NAD therapies in the clinic that he created. Now he's built seven radical longevity companies to try to bring revolutionary therapies to the world. These organizations work together in hopes to shed light on the therapies that have global impact. With that said, Tom, welcome to the Anti-Aging Hacks podcast. How's it going for us? <laughs> Good to see you, man. Good to so, see you too. The last time we saw each other was what? It's like three years ago at, at Radfest. Yeah, I think it was 2019 before this craziness happened. Uh -huh. What a different world we live in. Yeah. Um, okay, so Tom, um, I know you. I know you, and I know your background. But for the listeners, bring them up to speed on your background. That interesting story that I just read, how you got into NAD and where you are now with longevity. I got really sick when I was in Costa Rica, and um, I ended up taking some some. Uh, some antibiotics that I had an adverse reaction to. And, and it just, it was, it spiraled, it spiraled out of control. It, it I got a, a firsthand look of what it had, what it's like to have a chronic disease. Um, when you're in, in, in mainstream medicine and, and medicine in general in, in the United States, and it's, it's just awful. And, um, you know, it wasn't until, uh, I lost half my family in a car crash that I was just like, I mean, I went from being sort of a maverick and trying new things to just going just really pushing pushing the envelope um and in my research i you know it, it always can't it always can't come back to the same thing with cipro adverse reactions that this this antibiotic this antibacterial uh kills kills this this bacteria that lives in the cell called the mitochondria and so i, I was like there's got to be something that i could take that's going to reboot my mitochondria and so I, prior to getting nad i I actually had my mitochondria examined, examined under a uh, spectroscopy, um, send it away, and then and then did the NAD. And um, the NAD was only done for addicts in the U.S. It was uh, NAD's been around, IV NAD. So you're probably listening to this and going, "What is what therapy is he talking about?" Well, for the most part, I stick to the actual molecule NAD. And a lot of other people talk about precursors that become NAD. And I, I think they're all just lovely, but I, I think ours is better. And, but I, at the end of the day, I just, you know, I, I want everyone to be healthy, but yeah. So I ended up doing IV intravenous NAD with a, a bag, a drip um, that, that dripped the NAD bag over the course of it was 12, it ended up being 12 days. And I didn't have any reaction for the first seven days, which is crazy that you didn't have any reaction. But um, what had happened, though, on that seventh day, um, it, it was like my whole brain had been rejuvenated and it happened very, very quickly. I mean, it happened. It felt like it happened over the course of a few hours. And um, and it, it, it was like a religious experience. I was out in the water when it, it occurred to me that I was in a, it, it was I was in the it was the summertime in San Diego out in the water and during like you know that that last hour before the sun goes down and it like everything just came at me all at once and um, this feeling that my body was rejuvenated <laughs> and and I just 
I went from having a chronic illness that that no one could possibly understand. I was I was bedridden. I was I I had problems walking. I couldn't walk. Um, it was it was it was hell. It was absolute hell. You know, and it's, when people talk about long haulers, yeah, that's that's kind of like what it was like. Mm-hmm. Um, some of the bad people. So yeah, I mean, it, all that just sort of lifted, and and I was left with this feeling of what the hell just happened to me a second time, but this time good. Like mm-hmm. what just happened? You know, I'm trying to explain to people like, yeah, this this thing it rejuvenated me. You know, and no one really. And, and so I was left with that. And I, I knew that my, my purpose was somehow connected with this compound. And then six months later, David Sinclair came out with a, a monumental work where they injected a molecule called NMN in, into mice. The title says NAD, but the molecule you actually use was NMN and they injected it into the mice. And they, shot, they showed rejuvenation of the mice. That was in December 2013. And it was, and it basically, it became like a, like one of the first age reversal articles. And I was like, bingo. So I want to meet this guy. You know, that's what I thought. Yeah. I want okay. to tell him I've been, yeah, sorry, go ahead. Yeah. I was going to ask you. So okay. Tom, you're saying in seven days, you were, you, you took this, you got sick in Costa Rica. Maybe you were doing some recreational substances. We don't have to go there, but you took some. No, anti- I wasn't. Okay. <laughs> that didn't happen. Okay. So you took some antibiotics and yeah. it, it made you bedridden for a long time for months or weeks or how long was it? Years. Years. So I was, yeah. I, I probably in the seven years that I was so in the seven years that I was sick, I was probably bedridden for about two of them. Wow. Two years yeah. bedridden. Yeah. Okay. And then, so then you tried, I assume you tried a bunch of therapies. You got onto NAD, you, you did a bunch of the IVs and you said on day seven, you felt like you came out of everything and you were good again. Yeah. Wow. Um, yeah. And I, and I, and I felt like, yeah, I was on when, with the Sinclair paper that came out i thought i was sort of stepping into this world of longevity sort of accidentally mm-hmm. so i thought well let's see where this goes might as well embrace it right okay right. so let's let's talk about nad a bit more nad stands right. for nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide and tom i'd like for you to explain to the listeners why nad is so important it's function in our body and what happens as we age well it's it, it, it marries molecules together. It's a, it's a cofactor and a coenzyme. And it's, it's very important. It's sort of the, it's sort of like the, uh, like you're making a house. NAD is the carpenter. <laughs> I mean, mm-hmm. it, it's just, it's so necessary in all things, right? Mm-hmm. People that have studied biology, college biology, they, they may remember that it's involved in, in the mitochondria in the Krebs cycle, but it's also uh, useful in so many so many other reactions, hundreds and hundreds. One of the important reactions is it has to do with poly ADP ribose polymerase or PARP. Um, it activates that enzyme and this enzyme decides to go and, and recruit other enzymes and repair DNA breaks. And if the DNA breaks are really bad, then it will send the cell into apoptosis. And that's a really important really important reaction. Um, a typical cell may have tens of thousands of DNA breaks in the course of 24 hours. Right. So that NAD is super important. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And and so folks listening, 10, tens of thousands of DNA breaks in a day in us, in every cell of your body, possibly. And so NAD has components that uh, as Tom said, the enzymes is called PARP. And that uses components of NAD to go repair your DNA and to, to, you know, join it back together. And if it's not repairable, then it will send it into a program cell depth uh, down that pathway uh, called apoptosis. Um, so, okay. So two things we've uncovered. One is it repairs DNA, extremely important because we're, again, there's DNA breaks happening all day long. Two, it creates more energy as part of the Krebs cycle in the mitochondria. The more energy or ATP you have in your body, the better you can do your job, the better cells can do their job. And so it's obvious that we need more energy. But what else is it good for, Tom, the NAD molecule? Well, I mean, just briefly, um, mm-hmm. there are certain genes in, in, in cells in different species called sirtuins. And sirtuins are totally dependent upon the levels of NAD 
um, in, inside the cell. So without the DNAD, they don't activate. These sirtuins are associated with um, rejuvenation, life extension, uh, cell repair, uh, and they're extremely critical genes um, across species. Like sirtuin six, for example, is getting a lot of press lately. Um, <clears throat> sirtuin two is associated with telomerase. It's also NAD is also a neurotransmitter, and it's a precursor to neurotransmitters as well. It's also, it's very involved in, in the circadian cycle as well, turning genes off and on as it relates to sleep. Yeah, those yeah. are those are pretty cool. And our, our friend, Dr. David Sinclair is a huge fan of sirtuins as well. And uh, as Tom mentioned, these are special genes and enzymes that a lot of them code for longevity. And there's three to four longevity pathways in our body. Sirtuins is one of them, AMPK, Folks have might have heard about is one. Um, mTOR is a third one. Those are very important, and they regulate. They sense uh, the caloric, you know, the caloric needs or nutrition coming into your body. They sense if you're fasting, if you have nutrition. They sense if you're under oxidative stress, and they sense the environment around you. And they make big decisions on what to do in the body, what things to turn on. Meaning, do you turn on protein synthesis, which requires energy, or do you turn on fat oxidation, which means you burn, you burn energy from stored fat in your body. So again, very important for the organism to survive. And as Tom mentioned, NAD is just involved in a lot of processes, the carpenter, carpenter in the house. So it's, you know, helping a lot of other processes along. Okay. So then what happens to NAD? I assume, you know, we have a lot uh, in when we're young, even in our twenties and thirties, but what happens to NAD levels as we start to age, Tom? Well, I mean, the, the, sci the science that's emerging is showing that um, there's, a, there's a, a compound called CD38 that increases and that requires very large amounts of NAD. And mm -hmm. we salvage a lot of the NAD and reuse it in our body constantly throughout the day. But potentially the CD38, this upstream molecule, is, is depleting the NAD levels. And it has to do with... Um, uh, inflammation in, in the immune system. I, by the way, I'm not a scientist and I'm not a doctor. So, <laughs> um, and I, I should say this, you know, that, you know, uh, that what we're talking about is not FDA approved and none of the things that I'm saying are, are intended to, to treat or diagnose. Um, there, there hasn't really been a lot of science on this. A lot of this is very anecdotal, but as you're going to see, like NAD has been around for since 1948, the, we, human beings have been using IV NAD for, uh, for example, uh, opiate uh, addition since 1948. It's been around for a long time. Okay. So yeah, let's just segue into that, Tom. I know you've got personal experience with addictions and you were helping in your clinic in San Diego, folks that had addictions with, with opiates and their substances. And NAD was somehow helping them with withdrawal and getting back into balance and getting rid of the addiction. Do we have science on this? And if so, how does that work? Well, I mean, it's, and uh, it's like, how far can I jump down the rabbit hole? Okay, so I'll do a short version. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Abraham Hoffer was was one of the first people to, to use NAD and he used it for schizophrenia. Uh, this was in the 1960s. He was one of the first people there was a guy that he worked with named O'Halloran who was doing research on alcohol. Hoffer eventually became friends with Bill Wilson, the founder of Alcoholics Anonymous. And they thought that there was something very special about vitamin B3 and addiction. And so that's probably some of the, the earliest research. So O'Halloran has some clinical data. I, I just called, messaged the person that has the data. It's like, hey, you ever want to share that? Um, and, you know, a lot of a lot of information just doesn't get shared. But we did uh, at Radflat at Radfest conference last year, we we re released a bunch of uh, in-house clinical data that that we had used. And it showed that and I, I could. Why don't I go ahead and, and post? I will we'll put at the, the end notes, the video for that if people want to watch it, because it, it really goes into. Uh, the data that we, we, some of the data that we saw and, uh, and, and the results are basically everyone said it was fantastic or very good. And there was about five levels. So there wasn't anybody that said it was marginally good or average or poor. They, everyone was satisfied. 
the, and this was a, a population of, this was a sample of, uh, of, of drug and alcohol substance, substance abusers. Mm -hmm. And it was, was this, so that's great. Thank you for sharing. I'd love to post that as part of the show notes of this video okay. uh, and folks, for folks listening, the show notes are going to be at antiaginghacks.net forward slash NAD. Now, Tom, we're talking about these folks. I've got one more question with substance abuse. I think you mentioned alcohol and drugs. How many treatments of NAD did it take? And then were they cured of the substance abuse or they had to continue or they reverted back? Do you have any data on that? The problem with addiction is there's so many layers. Right. So one layer is the first, I, I call them levels of a game. So the mm -hmm. first level is going through with, through the withdrawal. Then you have going through cravings and then you have, let's say dealing with, so you have these post-acute withdrawal symptoms, or I call them cravings. It's kind of the same thing. And then you also have after that is uh, dealing with trauma. Why were you, why did you become addicted in the first place? Right. Or, or, or healing the brain damage from the addiction itself you doing some of these drugs cause massive brain damage. Now, NAD seems to help in all three of those. So for, for withdrawal, what's seen clinically is you don't have those who are going through alcohol withdrawal or benzodiazepines to have tremors, for example. Now, the doctor is going to work with the patient, but tremors lead to seizures that lead to death. Okay. So alcoholics die when they quite often when they withdraw from alcohol. Um, but you just don't see that with alcohol. One of, one of the things that NAD does for in the case of alcohol is it, it, it helps to metabolize it. So the two-step process to metabolize alcohol is, is NAD. And then NAD also, when you go through withdrawal, you, you, there's something called glutamate excitotoxicity. So glutamate is this neurotransmitter that's really excitatory and sort of irritable and gets you up and and then it's balanced by GABA. And when you drink, you drink, you bring the GABA levels up. And then what happens is, is uh, your body uh, becomes sensitized to it and it brings the glutamate up. And when you withdraw, you, you essentially leave those glutamate levels up and it, it's very harmful to cells. Glutamate is uh, excitotoxic. And th maybe the theory is that it's somehow uh, helping with that. Um, is that, was that your question? <laughs> yeah. And, and, and then in terms of, I guess, once people go through the program, the treatment, are they past the addiction or do they have to keep doing this for well, the longer term? It depends. I mean, there's some idea, there's some thought out there and a lot of these things aren't, they haven't really sort of been scientifically proven, but, you know, anecdotally and talk amongst MDs. Okay. So the PhDs don't like this, but the MDs talk and they say, you know what? There's some people that just require a lot of NAD, you know, something that Hoffer said, the PhD MD that was using in the sixties was that some of his schizophrenics, I mean, they responded really well to NAD. He thought it was, it was a, a radical cure for NAD. And I, I don't think his opinion would change a whole, a whole lot. Um, but it was, it was very difficult to sort of reproduce his studies. And he used the, the, the other issue was he used a lot of things. He was, he was, he was, he used a cocktail of things. So at the end of the day, it's like, well, was it NAD? And it's like, he had to use all these other little parts. But what he saw was instead of with the niacin, it took a lot of his patients. And this was in the first couple of years, he would, he would get the schizophrenic and he, he had thousands of schizophrenic patients and he would give them NAD and uh, he would give them, sorry, vitamin B3. And then after a few months, there would be recovery of a remarkable rate. Uh, with the NAD, he saw the recovery rate uh, being as little as like, let's say four days, okay? But there was all these other stumbling blocks. I mean, they would, be, they would become awake and realize they ran around naked or what have you. A lot of people weren't ready to be um, sort of back to sanity. And then there was all the doctors that, didn't agree with the methodologies and then the regulations and, and whatnot. Um, but Hoffer had a lot of freedom of movement when he was working for a time. He was at the largest sanitarium in Canada. It was the largest building. You imagine this, the largest building of Canada was this giant sanitarium where he worked and he was, he had the freedom to, to work with this, with, with other famous and with other well-known scientists. One of them was Linus Pauling, who was the world's 
greatest chemist at the time. But to get back to your point, he thought that some people required it for a certain period of time. And then some people, they just needed a certain amount, get their brain working again, and then they were fine. I think that, I mean, today you can, you can get metabolite testing. Like I know when my vitamin B3 levels are low, like I, I get it tested and it says it's low. And, you know, it's kind of funny because my B3 levels are quite often pretty low. And so I take NAD for that and I take other B vitamins and, and antioxidants and stuff like that too. So um, it really is sort of, this is like, this is the future of medicine. You know, it's, it's not a one size fits all approach, but actually like looking at the individual and saying, well, what does this person need? What's the best thing for this person? Right. Yeah. We're learning now that there's not even one diet for all kinds of people, right? It's all different, individualized uh, to your genotype and your phenotype now and the environment that you're in now. Okay. So if you are somebody that has addictions or you have a loved one that is maybe addicted to substances and you want to help them heal, then what is the most efficient way? Like would a primary care physician know about NAD as a treatment for, you know, tackling this addiction? And withdrawal? No, I mean, it's hardly, there's only a certain percentage of doctors that work in the field of functional medicine or integrative med medicine or naturopathic medicine. I mean, it's like 3% or 5%. Most so, doctors have no idea. They don't even know it exists, right. which so is a problem it, because yeah. the, the FDA had hired the University of Maryland to send surveys to people asking, ask, or send surveys to doctors asking them if they if they, if they would still like to use NAD because they're going to get rid of it. And so what the FDA has done is they've tried to, uh, kn known or unknown to themselves, mm -hmm. they've intentionally or unintentionally creating a system where people aren't going to know about this therapy that that saved my life and right. I take okay. it rather personally. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's a lot we can talk about with the FDA and what's going on with regenerative medicine. Uh, so again, to close the loop on this one, if you are somebody yeah. that e is either undergoing or going through substance abuse, or you have a loved one and you want to help them, the best way then would be to reach out to a naturopathic physician. Um, a doctor. There's, there's doctors that you have to, there's a lot of doctors that now, use NAD. So you could Google, you know, IV NAD and, mm -hmm. and you can find a, a list of doctors. However, many of these doctors, they have no clue. They don't have too much of a clue about addiction. And so yeah, sure. what happens is they, they have no idea that there's so many other issues, trauma, abuse, uh, changing one's environment. You can't just like, this is not something that you can, you can easily put together. I mean, mm -hmm. a, a, a lot of people, not all, it, it, again, it really depends, you know? So where I, does, I didn't need any aftercare when I okay. did NAD. I got you, know? you, but yeah. So where does somebody go, Tom? So I would how, say, how would they do this? I, I mean, you could, um, you could, uh, you know, g Google NAD IV therapy, um, look for doctors that it says on their website that they treat addiction. Mm -hmm. And that's one of their primary um, things that they're doing. Um, and you can do it for that. If okay. it, let's say you have Parkinson's, then, you know, you want to see that they've got some experience using it with NAD, for example. Um, and it would mm -hmm. be the, the thing about NAD is it's like seven to, tw to it, it might be somewhere between seven and 15 days uh, of, of therapy consecutive of a slow drip that might require five, 10 hours a day. So it's a, it's a long drip to really get the most out of it. There are some, some people that have such a strong, their addiction is such a strong hold. It's like everybody in the office is taking care of that person, you know? Um, and then there's other ones where it's, it's rather straightforward. So yeah, addiction is kind of a, it's a, it's a really difficult animal. And we're trying to do research on it. And it, it's just so, so hard to do research because uh, uh, of just so many variables that can go wrong. And so I've spent the last few years trying, trying to design a trial around, um, around addiction and NAD to show that it, in a randomized control environment, it actually works. So, Okay. Let's, uh, 
Let's touch on what you mentioned very briefly. Is the FDA looking to regulate or ban the use of NAD in clinics? What are you hearing? Well, that what what the FDA does is they don't they don't try to ban the use of it in clinics. What they try to do is uh, ban the, the production of it in compounding pharmacies, so they can avoid ever having to step in a clinic. Mm-hmm. It just the supply runs out. So, you know, like for example, there was artesanate, which is um, some derivative of curcumin that some people won a Nobel prize for. And, uh, and it's been used for cancer. And so the, the FDA has gone in and took it out, said, you can't use it. <laughs> and, and, uh, but it was such a, it was such a favorite for functional medicine doctors. And, and now you're seeing, you're seeing big pharma come in and trying to develop it as a drug. And so, I mean, you're seeing, you're, you you might be seeing that with, 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 uh, there's sort of a drugification of a lot of these things. You hear about it with marijuana too. Um, just the FDA forcing people to go down this FDA path, this sort of drug path. Um, but this is happening for, as you know, they've, they, they push different therapies into different channels and it just, it drives the costs up is what it does. And it makes it very difficult. It, it's, it's one of the biggest problems for for life extension. I, I I absolutely believe it, and the fact that no one's talking about it is crazy. But there are hundreds of of compounds that are on the verge of of being completely prohibited in the U.S. So something like glutathione. It, I ask people like name something, and I'll you know I'll tell you if it if if the FDA is trying to ban it. So it'd be like glutathione. Um, well, and, and acetylcysteine is now yeah. being taken off the market, right? Yeah. Yeah. And compounded um, and acetylcarnitine is, is, I mean, the list change a little bit. Mm-hmm. The FDA is allowed uh, methyl B12. That was on the list and they're, not, they're now allowing that. Again, it's like, this is a freedom. This is, you should have the freedom to do with you, what you want with your body. Now, NAD was like a lot of these substances, they were declared grass or generally recognized as safe. And um, the FDA has taken them off of those lists so that they could come after it. So that they, they, but it, it, NAD was grandfathered in as generally recognized as safe. But um, yeah, there's a lot I can go in there, but let me just say that it's, it's, um, it, I think it's, it's corrupt. That's how I feel about it. Okay. I feel it's very corrupt. We can have more of a conversation <laughs> off record on this time. Uh, all right, all so right. let's let's move on and talk about longevity and anti-aging, the benefits of NAD. And we touched on a lot of them, why NAD is important in your body, what it does. And as we age, levels decline. So we, if we upregulate or get more NAD into the body, then that should boost part of the enzyme function that we talked about. And we're starting to see some studies. There are studies done in rodent models, mice and murine models that show, you know, efficacious levels of, I guess, more NAD in tissue as well. It's hard to measure. And I'll, I'll ask you about this, Tom, is how do we measure the rise, the increase in NAD in inside a person's body? So one way to do it is to look at blood levels. The other way is to directly measure tissue. And tissue is hard to measure in humans because I don't want to give up a part of my kidney for scientific research. I don't know, maybe somebody else does, but I don't. So how do we come to a valid conclusion of more NAD in the blood? Well, that's a good sign, but how does it get in, into the tissue, especially in humans? What do we, what do we know about that? Well, I, I mean, I agree with a lot of what you just said. It, sometimes it's not just about NAD levels because NAD is just part of a metabolic chain. Uh, in the case of, of niacin, what, what we see if you take, if you take niacin is it boosts NAD levels and mm-hmm. it's very inexpensive to do that. But the sirtuin response that's been seen is, is uh, not as uh, it, it's not as strong as, as uh what 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 I've been told by scientists that what you would get with some of the other precursors. So it's it, it, it yeah you want to boost NAD levels, but it's also about to me at the end of the day there's a lot of ways that things can be sort of fudged. When you talk to someone who's done it, IV NAD and you ask them you know how was it, they usually say wow that was amazing. Every once in a while you'll find someone who says eh I didn't really feel anything, you know but you you generally get a lot of people where they they 
I, I run into people that say that it's, it's changed them and it's just amazing. And they're so happy that, that there's someone like myself who's involved and that makes me feel good. So yeah, it's it, in terms of raising NAD and that's been a problem for, for me because we're, we're studying NAD right now and I have an NAD assay and it, we have 23 different, we have a, a metabolome of different NAD compounds. And, um, and sometimes I feel like there isn't enough there because there should be more, there should be more compounds that's, that show that, that positive things are happening, but at least we can, we can gen- try to generate the subjective response. Okay. And we can try to, 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 um, to measure some of the other responses and it's, 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 it's difficult. <laughs> And I'll tell you why, because, you know, even though David Sinclair says NAD is the closest thing that we found to uh, the the fount of youth, it's there's so much more we have to do. You know, I've been playing around with all these different things that you talk about on your podcast. And it just sometimes it only moves the dial just a little bit for 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 me and NAD. it, It moved it incredibly. So but to answer your question, we need to know about more about sirtuin response, et cetera. A, a lot of different NAD uh, compounds and precursors are gonna are gonna move are gonna move it. What's special about pure NAD in a delivery that bypasses the gut, okay, is that you quite often feel it in the brain, okay. That's that's what makes NAD special, okay. With niacin, which is another precursor, it, what's special about that is it's it's um its effect on um the cardiovascular system okay and the research that's done on that but for nad it's really special because what what nad does is there's scientists that have been able to measure the increase of nad into the brain okay and they're able to do that um with a with what's called an mrs machine and it 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 acts like it's like the the hubble telescope that peers into outer space, except it peers right into the brain and it can actually see those, those NAD molecules. And what we're seeing is from IV NAD, an increase in NAD from the, from the, from an IV drip, it's getting into the brain. So while you have scientists that say, oh, it, it doesn't, it doesn't pass through the, through the, the, the cell membrane. Well, you see it pass, you see it going into astrocytes, which is, somehow related to the blood brain barrier. I don't know enough because I'm not, I don't have a science based background, but it, it does get its way into astrocytes and it, and we do see it increasing in the brain. Mm-hmm. And so that's, that's what I think is especially about this particular, um, this particular compound as it relates to NAD itself. So using the pure NAD, mm-hmm. um, and, uh, so, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I talked to the scientists that did that study and I said, well, what about NR and NMN? And they said, like, we don't really think, eh, we, we haven't really studied it enough. We don't really think it it, it works as well. I was talking with um, Joe Bauer, who's at the University of Pennsylvania several years back, and I, he had uh, radio labeled the isotopes on the NR compound. And if it would break apart different places and the NMN in different places, and is it reassembled into the cells and into mice. And, and what was found was they didn't see an uptake. I said, how come you haven't remarked on what it does in the brain? He's like, well, we don't really see any significant increase in the brain. We don't see the, we don't see the, the isotopes in the brain. Interesting. Yeah. uh, Okay. Let me, let me just maybe as a little bit of a segue, let's go down and talk about NAD synthesis, you've talked about niacin a few times. There's a couple of pathways that the body uses to create NAD in the body. One is using niacin, which we know as vitamin B3. The other one is a tryptophan pathway that takes seven or eight steps to complete. So people think it's not the most efficient way to get NAD. And then you also touched on a couple of other precursors that have become quite popular in supplemental form, which is NR, which stands for nicotinamide nicotinamide riboside and NMN, which is uh, nicotinamide mononucleotide. Both of these are precursors to NAD, meaning they, they form NAD. The other understanding that I have, Tom, is that NAD by itself is a molecule that's too large to go into the cell directly by itself. So it has to be breaking down into one of NR or NMN, preferably NR, I think. 
Uh, and that allows it to get into the cell where it gets resynthesized into NAD and therefore it can be useful in all the processes that we talked about. Is that accurate so far? Um, yeah, I think that 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 this idea that NAD can't cross through the cell membrane is something that that is there's a consensus of scientists that that are thinking that way. Um, you know, uh, talking with Nady Brady, he says, you know, just because we don't we haven't found it yet doesn't mean it's not there. <laughs> he's he's holding out. Right. So. But, yeah, the consensus of scientists say that it's too large. It's got a phosphate on it. It can't go through the cell membrane. Stop talking about it. <laughs> OK, got it. Uh, but but the NAD, uh, what what might be happening is as it goes into the bloodstream is it breaks apart and adenosine it stays together and it gets picked up and some of these things get picked up separately and they they just sort of re-emerge you know inside, inside the, the brain or, or inside the inside the tissue which is quite fascinating that we we don't even know how it's done so I know. But that's probably the way that it does that and when you're taking the nad you can feel this this sort of like weird pressure in it in it and that's the the feeling of of adenosine. Mm -hmm. Okay, so yeah. let's talk about briefly all the different ways you can enhance your NAD in your body. It seems like every time I turn turn around or finish washing the dishes, there's a new way to administer NAD. And you know, presumably companies are coming up with new ways because you know they can sell it to consumers. There's only two supplements you can take, which is NR and NMN. Uh, but you could do batches. So let's go over each of these, and I'd love to get your commentary on each of these ways of administering or increasing NAD. So let's, we talk about supplements. You can get yeah, NR. I'm going to, I'm going to do a shameless plug for, for my product. Yeah, absolutely. So that's the, we have the NAD patch. It's a revolutionary mm -hmm. patch. It's, it's like twice as much NAD that hasn't been proven yet, but we have a patent pending. It's, it's extremely concentrated. It uses a battery operated. Uh, it uses ions to send the NAD through. There isn't anything else like it out there. And so you're getting that injection into the body. What we now know about these other precursors is when they're taken orally, um, and I'll, we'll I'll, we'll send you the show notes. Is that the 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 NR and the NMN is radically changed? You know, I was talking with a famous NAD scientist. She's like, Tom, it's it's been radically changed. It's like it's not even the same thing when it gets gets beyond the gut. And I was like, I told you this two years earlier, Marie. And um, but. Uh, but the patches, when we there, I, I'm going to give you a discount code if you want, if people want to try them out. Um, that's one way of doing them because you you don't have to go into a clinic. There may be some possibility of being able to use that in in. Um, and it, there isn't really a lot of research, obviously, but that's what we're we're doing now. Um, that's one way. There's the IV NAD. There's oral NR, oral NMN liposomal NR, liposomal M NMN. There's uh, niacin. Um, there's, there's an injection now, NAD is injection. Is it really? Yeah, yeah. Well, niacin injection has been around for a long time. They're just bringing it back, right? Right. Yeah. Um, but uh, they've been around for, for a while as well. But no, I haven't, I haven't used the niacin injection. I'm about to try that out. Okay, and then the intranasal, is there any difference with liposomal or uh, I guess the other forms in the past versus intranasal? I've only experienced intranasal NAD. At the 2018 conference that, that, I, that I put together, I had someone come to me and he said, I did the intranasal NAD and it changed my life. Thank you for changing my life. I was like, that's all you've done is the intranasal NAD? That's only 35 milligrams. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> Wow. For, you know, I mean, so for, for him, it was a lot and he probably should do more. But um, I think that at this time, for what people want, typically, I would say it's like the IV and the patch are where you probably get the most, you know, sort of the most bang for your buck, the most just a just a sheer effect, I think, is from those. I mean, look at let's, let's say look at the Amazon reviews of NR of some of these products and, and, and see like how they talk about them. We, we get people that say this was the, the best decision of their life was taking IV NAD. It's like greater than anything else. Your wife is right here. It's greater than marrying your wife. He's like, yes. Um, but I mean, that that's mostly for people that have been suffering from drug addiction, like opiates. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, you do get that. 
it's it's a minority like five percent mm-hmm. um okay but but what, what other ones are we did you want to talk about because uh, so the- i i need to know i need to try them yeah. oh there is also a face cream now you can get an nad face cream that's yeah we, supposedly- we were selling face cream I, the, the creams are good it, it's interesting to try if you have physical pain because you can get rid of some of the pain but i think you could probably do that with you know a tramadol cream to avoid a being addicted to um opiates why take an opiate when you when only your shoulder hurts right <laughs> why would I, you do that yeah I, but even though the fda is trying to ban these kinds of of methodologies they want you to take just the pill they only want you to have one option right so a lot of these things shockingly and like going after nad they're going after it for for also for your pets and for uh people that don't have stomachs and stuff like that it's a really it's very wide sweeping and they they were never supposed to have that mandate they're interpreting a law incorrectly so um we have to do something about that sorry that's the activist in me but yeah what what else did you want to talk about uh what age should people start doing NAD? And if let's say they're trying your patches, how often should they do these? Is it once a week, twice a week? Like how often should we be doing the patches? I mean, that's all like, that's like, hey, I want you to pretend to be a doctor so you can go to jail. Um, I'm just kidding. Um, yeah, so I'm not a doctor. This is like, for me, the way that I would want to answer this if I was in this position is I would, I would want to try it out. And, and see how I felt and if it made me feel good. Um, because I think that's one way of determining if something is something that's right for you. Um, I, certainly if you have, but you know, I, I think it, it'd be also be important to check, check your levels. Um, it's funny, you know, when, when I first gave Ben Greenfield NAD, I was like, I don't, I don't know if it's going to work on you. It's like, why? I'm like, Cause like you're perfect, you know? And uh, <laughs> so he's like, well, let's try it. And he tried it and he was like blown away. So he was taking good care of himself and it still had a very positive effect. I think since, it, and this is just my opinion, it's not medical advice b- because NAD has been um, tested on animals in South Africa and it's gone through um, all, all their phases to become a drug because it's been used for many decades, because it's been in use for such a long period of time, because niacin, heavy dose niacin has been in such a huge use for a long period of time. And they were saying all these horrible things about it. You, you, you shouldn't use niacin, it's gonna kill you. They were saying that in the 60s. People, I have, I have friends that take 10 grams of niacin, 20 grams um, that they they use on some of their patients. Um, they're, yeah, they're, this is something that you want to go over with a doctor. Um, so um, I think that the, I want to say that you get a, a better, you, you get a, a much more positive subjective experience from, from doing NAD um, once you're past 35. If the thing is NAD works on a lot of narcotic drugs, on a lot of prescription drugs. And so there, there's, there's this sort of anecdotal non-proven thought that it's just so necessary with narcotics and, and prescription drugs that the more that someone's taking, the better, the, the better the situation is. Now, you know, there was some science about like the overdose for, for niacin was like, when they, when they used it on a dog was like, a half a pound or something like that. It was a ridiculous number of grams. Um, but I mean, this is something that you need to go over with a functional medicine doctor to see if it's right for you. I'm, I'm not qualified and I'm not legal, legally able to tell you how much you should take. Yeah. But I, I would, if it was me, I might try a little bit out, you know, in my twenties, do, do, I would do a lot more in my thirties, forties, and just continue to take it and take it with a lot of other stuff too. Um, NAD demethylates, so does niacin. But, you know, in reading a lot about um, Hoffer, you know, there was a, um, there was a super centenarian that took a lot of niacin. So it was like, hmm, makes you wonder. And Hoffer and Pauling lived into their, into their nineties, um, taking these mega doses of vitamins. Um, so um, I wish we, we could say more about that, but I just think that with the, the, 
the amount of decades that have gone by since the since the late forties to now, it, it does say that say something about the the safety of it, even though there isn't any uh, real science to to show the safety of it. Yeah. Okay. All right, Tom. Where can people find these patches? So longevitycollective.com is our website. And then we also have, I'm doing a documentary. I wrote a book. There's links for that. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I'm also, one of these days, I'm going to be opening up a, a clinic in, in Costa Rica. So um, there's information that should be after that as well. Um, cool. Like yeah. a longevity clinic? Yeah, I think so. I, but I also think that if you want to live a long time, you shouldn't work too hard. So I, I think we're only going to have it open a certain period of time. I noticed the people that run podcasts are, they're much younger than the people that are do, out there doing the work. So I want to, I'd rather be doing stuff that you're doing for us. Um, <laughs> it's a lot of work, man. <laughs> is it? No, I'm, I'm kidding. But I, I, I'd, I'd like to, you know, Costa Rica is a blue zone and it's also a happiness zone too. There was another book done on happy zones. Um, and so what I found in, and, and I've, I've been studying these aging markers for a number of years, what I found is that it's really about like, a lot of this is about lifestyle, mm-hmm. you know, I mean, NAD did save, save me, it did save my life. I was going to end it all, but, but it really at this point, it's like, you know, just taking care of yourself and, and eating well and exercising and, and doing all the things that, you know, your grandmother tells you to do. Yeah. More so, yeah, amen to that. We're learning more and more about how the epigenetics are influencing the genes at a much greater level than we ever thought possible. And so as long as we're taking the learnings from the blue zones and the happy zones and incorporating that into our busy lifestyles, I think we'll see massive dividends. All right, Tom, thank you so much. Is there anything else you want to tell the audience before we sign off? I can't think of anything. (laughs) Okay, well, thank you very much for coming on the Anti-Aging Hacks show. Folks, if you want to try out Uh, the NAD patches, go to longevitycollective.com and order some. All right, Tom, we'll talk to you soon. Thanks, Roz. Okay, bye-bye.